In this video, I'm going to answer the question, what is a form handler? And I'll also tell you why you might want to use them in Pardot. So you're probably familiar with regular forms in Pardot. I'm going to click on a form here just to show you. Now, here's an example of a regular Pardot form. It's got fields that your user can fill out, and there's a submit button for them to submit that data into Pardot. And you can embed this on a web page, or you can create a landing page out of it. Well, a form handler captures the same data. It gets those field values, but there's no user interface. You can't actually see the form, like we can see this one, and there's no submit button for the user to press. So a form handler is just the endpoint. It's just the ability to capture that same data. And you might want to use a form handler instead of a regular Pardot form if you're using an external form. That's the most common reason. Like an external form that's on a website, something that's outside of Pardot. So once that external form is submitted, you can essentially forward that data into Pardot using the Pardot form handler. Another use case for form handlers is for integrations. Now, when you typically think about an integration, you probably think API. And a form handler is like a very limited API because you can actually post or submit data directly into the Pardot database using a form handler. Just like when you submit a form, that data comes in, you can do the same thing with a form handler here. So let's talk a little bit about how it works. A form handler has an endpoint URL, and at that endpoint, it's listening for those field values to capture and bring into Pardot. Then once that form is submitted, it captures that data, it's able to do all the normal form things you're used to through completion actions, like add something to a list or send them an email. And so when you're looking at a form handler, what you'll see is the endpoint URL near the top. And then beneath that, you'll have form field mappings. And here are any of the fields of data that we want to capture through this handler. And when you have your field, you've got the default name on the right-hand side, whatever we call it within Pardot. And then on the left-hand side, you have the external field name. And so this external field name might change depending on that external form and what that external form calls first name or last name or email. Because it might not be first, it might be first underscore name or something like that. So what external field name value you give to these fields really is going to depend on, on what that external form is. And so to show you, you know, how this works, we've got our endpoint URL here. And think of this as just a link or a web page with nothing on it. So you'll redirect your user when they submit that button or that form on your website, you'll redirect them to this URL. And then this form handler is going to be looking for the data that it's trying to capture through something called URL parameters. So I'm going to copy this endpoint URL. I'm going to put this endpoint URL in the URL bar up here, and then I'm going to add the parameters to the end. So the way that you add parameters to the end of URL is you start with a question mark. And then you're going to add your field value pairs. So our first one is typically going to be email. And so that is the external field name called email. And then I'll put in the actual value, which in my case would be brian at rotov.io. But this would be the email address of whoever had submitted that form. With an ampersand, you can add another field value pair. And so we'll do first equals Brian. And let's do one more. Last equals Hayes. So when I navigate to that endpoint URL, to this web page with nothing on it, the system, the form handler, is going to see those fields and values in that URL itself and capture that, just like a submitted form. And then the last thing it's going to do is it's going to redirect me. So once it captures the data, it's going to forward me on to the thank you page that I set, or it's going to send me back to wherever I came from. So in my form handler example here, I've actually set the success location to our website. So if you look at success location, it says rotov.io. So that's where I should go if that form is submitted properly. I'm going to hit enter. You didn't even see that form handler page load because there's really nothing there. As soon as it loads, it's redirecting you to that thank you page. And that's where we're at here now at rotov.io. What I found the best way to understand form handlers is, is to think of it as a form without an interface. There's no buttons to click but it still acts like a form. So you're able to redirect people from other forms or other locations. And as long as you have those fields and values in the URL, it's gonna capture that data so that you can use it within Pardot. Now, if you'd like to learn how to build out a form handler step-by-step -step and actually use it with an external form, take a look at our next video where I do just that with a WordPress Elementor form. And if you wanna learn how to use Pardot faster, take a look at one of our courses at academy.rotive.io. Thanks for watching.